They told me that they go to Jail Newbern. Yes. Jail Newbern Mid uh, Middle School is the same place that I grew up and that where I attended school. Though they told me that uh, I don't really like the school. They stereotype me. They told me I'd never be anything at that school. They looked down at me. I think those are ways that we have to we have to change the, the, the culture and the narrative uh, in our in our kids and our students. If you can build a STEM academy for Boston, you gotta be able to build one for Jail Newbern too. Yeah. What is that? What did that say to those students? I'm not good enough. Uh, the color of my skin is a little, my, the pigmentation of my skin is, is too too dark, so I don't get a chance to to, to, to excel like others. We have to change the coach and the narrative. Mayor, <coughs> what do you propose about the racial divide in the city as far as schools are and residents? So I took, uh, I announced on, I think, January 30th that I was going to run. Very first meeting I took, surprised that I got it. said, I got three questions for you before I could back you fully. He said, I answered the first two right. On the last one, I thought I was going to get it wrong. He said, what do you, how do you stand on school integration and how do you stand on consolidation? Wow. And I knew who I was sitting in front of. Mm -hmm. I knew I was sitting in front of the champion for the no vote for consolidation of the school system. I was, I was standing in front of the man who championed that, who put the stickers on cars, who got that 80-20 no vote for school consolidation. And I said, you know exactly how I stand. It has to be done. He said, then you have my support. And I thought fell out of my chair. <laughs> I said my feeling was it was a business decision with businessmen trying the first time around. It's teachers, it's educators who have to make that and have to move that forward. So that's exactly how you do it. We need consolidation for this kind of need to right. People live where they can afford it. Children do what they are exposed to. You want to change things, enhance a person's economic opportunity. You want a child to be in a different environment, expose them to different things. One of my platform issues is to create a job program for our young people. So when they're home during the summer, they don't have to play video games or think about getting in trouble. They get an application and go to work. Yeah. Well, I'm not running for the Board of Education, but that's an issue that those guys have to address. But I can tell you what we can do from the city government, and that's create jobs, create jobs, create jobs. 
I'm cha chairman of the South Georgia Regional Law Board. This year we lent $16 million to businesses in an 18 county area and created 165 jobs. I know about economic growth and development and I know how to do it. And when I'm elected day one, one day your children, once they get educated, will decide to come back to Valdosta like my kids did do because they can earn a decent living and live wherever the hell they want to live. Thank you. <laughs> Question is folks, what keeps you up at night as it relates to this race in our city and what would you do? Good question. Lots. <laughs> so I've uh, been uh, three years to brought me to this point right here. 30 years of building relationships, 30 years of nurturing people to the ground and watching them go up. Um, I want to put that to work for this city. I got relationships on that city, count, city council, I got relationships on that county commission. Um, the city is strapped for cash. In case you weren't at the meeting, like Vivian and Sonny and some of the others were, they were actually facing a $900,000 shortfall of people. They called it 450 because they put off projects. They're going to be handing that, those projects off to the next mayor. They didn't handle that right at all. They needed to cancel the rollback on that village. They needed to increase it to, to offset that shortfall, and they needed to have that balanced budget. And it's a backward system when you have to balance a budget, and then you get your tax digest a month and a half later you find out that you missed because the tax digest is sad. So again, people, I'm going to put that to work and we're going to do things right and you can't do it alone. The city cannot do it alone. They need the county of Lowndes to help. Mayor, what keeps you up at night as it relates to this race in our city and what will you do? There are over 100 people in this city homeless. And it, it really hit me hard the last four years of my life when I started teaching high school at Valsta High School. And seeing kids not coming to school prepared to learn. They don't have pencils, they don't have paper, because they're worried about where they're going to sleep, where they're going to eat. They have a program over in Thomasville, over in Moultrie, but they built homes for homeless people. Now, we have got to realize we got issues in Valdosta, and we got to have someone in the mayor's seat that can work with council to get these issues addressed. I've got that experience. I have created jobs. I have solved issues. It's time now to get someone in City Hall who cares about <coughs> you and want to do something for you. That's J.D. Rice. <laughs> What keeps you up at night as it relates to this race in our city and what we do about it? Lack of jobs and lack of opportunity. Lack of per capita income. And that transcends all racial lines. It doesn't matter what color you are. When I'm elected, I'm going to work for jobs. I'm going to improve your quality of life. There's going to be prosperity back in this community like it used to be. And you people that are on fixed incomes, we're not going to do it by raising your property. What keeps you up at night as it relates to this race and our city and what we're going to do? Things that keep me up at night are the same thing that keep you find citizens of Valdosta up at night. <coughs> Unity and collaborative effort. The transparency in the city. How so many multi-million dollar projects being done and sometimes you have no idea what's going on. The same thing that keeps you up at night is the crime. Are these kids in trouble? Are they? I woke up one morning. I think I got a, a, a Facebook notification at 12 o'clock at, at night or that morning uh, that said that two kids got shot. Two young kids got shot. It scared me. Same thing that I think about at night. So I got up as a concerned citizen to get up in that uh, in the middle of the uh, night. My wife wasn't too happy about it, but I had to go and I had to find out what was going on. Those are the things that keep me up at night. Wondering if our kids are safe. Wondering if you guys are safe. Uh, uh, the jobs, that's all that you hear about from all these things. It's about the jobs. What about our kids? What about you? What about the future generations? What about the culture and the narrative of this city? 
we got to put more focus on other things than just the jobs. They'll, they'll come, but we got to sweep around on the front door first. <laughs> so, your question, okay. sir, would be, what do you envision as your plan of action for development of our scripts? Well, we need to, in my work, we use analytical data and we do data mining. And with the net technology today, it's not very difficult to find out what we do good. We're operating under some outdated models. Our authorities are designed <coughs> like they were in the 1970s. And if you don't recognize they're not working, how are you going to bring about change? We need to focus on those instruments that are not working. And we as a community, through collaboration and representation of everybody, we need to come up with new models that can help us all grow and prosper together. Working together, we can build a better Valdosta. What do you envision as your plan of action for developing the Valdosta's uh, Great question. How do we develop Valdosta? I think we've got to change the mentality of Valdosta, change the mindsets. Um, I've seen so many times, and I'll give you an example of a mentality that we need to change. There could be a trash can right here in the middle of this room. But I can guarantee you that the trash can, or the trash is not inside the trash can, but it's around the trash can. That's how, we, that's how I see the city. Everywhere I go, I see the same thing over and over. We just got to change the mentality of Valdosta. Valdosta has so many strengths, so many greatness, and so, so much talent here in the city. I went over to VSU, and I seen so much greatness in those millennials over there. But they're, they're, they're stereotyped because they're told that they'll never be anything. They'll never amount to anything. They're too young, they're too inexperienced. But I promise you, we got to start uplifting one another. Love cures everything. Love conquers all. And we got to start loving one another. We put, too, we put them down too much. Let's start lifting them up. That's how we change our dogs. jobs out at the old Rabalo plant that's in support of uh, the boat industry and they just did 150 jobs for Artash Yamamura out there. <coughs> I've been practicing. Uh, those they call 20 to 22 dollar an hour jobs but you're making booze bottles and I don't have that skill. They had their best year ever and that was three projects I just talked about right there. I don't think I can name three in the last 15. So maybe, again, we tell our story better. When we have success, we run up a flagpole, see if that doesn't lead to something, and, uh, and support them in every way, shape, and form we can. Thank question. What do you envision or your plan of action for developing jobs? You heard one of my opponents <coughs> say, we talk too much about jobs. Well, those are kitchen table issues. It's hard to convince your family you want to do something for them if you ain't got no money. Bottom line, things it's all about numbers. We got to get some jobs in the city that pay people a, a decent living. But I also has a 32% poverty rate, the lowest of any metropolitan city in Georgia. We're behind everybody else. But we got so much to offer. Our strengths, our airport has the third longest runway of any airport in Georgia. Only Atlanta and Savannah have a longer airport. What that means, any plane that can land in Augusta or Macon or Columbus can land in Valdosta. But any plane that can land in Valdosta can't land in Augusta, Macon or Columbus. We have two major railroads. What does that mean? Savannah Port, Brunswick Port, bringing in cars. Those, they're putting them on trucks. You can put a hundred trucks on one train. Bring that, 
that railroad line to Valdosta, like you did in Cordell, and make what's called an inner city module. We got potential here. We need to use it. <coughs> How will you combat crime in Valdosta's poorest areas? That's a great question, and, and that, that, that question, there's no easy answer to that. Uh, because it goes back to that 31601 uh, area code that uh, Kennedy Rivers was talking about. It goes back to the jobs that these five gentlemen were talking about. Um, that's, that's a question that, it's going, that's a work in progress. Uh, because when there's no jobs, lack of money, low income, welfare base, that's where you find crime. Until we can fix some of those things, uh, you'll continue to have crime. So I think that we do need to focus on jobs, but I believe that we need to, I, I think it goes back to parenting. I think we got to do a better job of parenting, raising our kids in the best way possible, providing for them a little bit better, uh, so that they don't feel as if they have to go out and steal, kill, or destroy it just to be able to receive it. Um, so I would like to see us <coughs> go in, and, and, and the truth of it is, I believe the answers are with the citizens. When I'm out campus in the areas, those, those citizens have all the answers. We just have to be able to get out there to them, and that's what they're not seeing a lot of. They're not, they're not seeing a lot of the, the candidates out there to talk with them. How will you combat crime in Valdosta's poorest areas? So, Kevin and I were at the same council meeting. Four beautiful women came before that council. And, and the sad part was that council was hearing about this for the first time, that these four women are living on the same street, and one of the people that were running on there was uh, running roughshod over that entire street. But they had to hear about it for the first time, and I... I got to excuse Vivian, and I think she already knew, and I think she knew the four ladies that were coming up before her. And <coughs> but th that they had to hear that for the first time at that council meeting. Talks about that disconnect. <laughs> the police chief, Chief Manahan, was there, was present, met with those four people afterward, talked about a solution, talked about a solution from the one person running roughshod over an entire neighborhood, an entire street <coughs> over there. Community policing is the only way we're going to get that done. You talk to me, you talk to them, and uh, we confront that problem head on as a group. You let those people, those four old elderly women, try and do it on their own, exist on their own, they floss. <coughs> they all can't be slashed. People love keeping what they have. Nobody wants somebody to break in their home and take things they work hard for. When folks don't have things, sometimes they take alternative methods to try to get things so they can have. <clears throat> My plan is simple. Let's attack the problem at the root. Let's give these kids some jobs. You worry about teenage crime, these kids breaking their ceiling costs, breaking their homes, put them to work. Mm -hmm. Give them an alternative. Mm -hmm. I guarantee you see crime go down. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Actually, uh, yes. Yes. <laughs> 30, 30 seconds, right? 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Um, how do we give the, the kids a job and get the parents job first? How, do, how, how can we take care of that? I mean, that, that doesn't make sense to me. I would love to see uh, these kids or the parents have jobs. But before we can bring jobs, you got to fix the infrastructure. you got to find a way to entice these jobs. It's just like building a home. If I want to build a home in a place that I like, that I love, that it looks beautiful, so we need to start beautifying Valdosta, enticing more jobs to come here. Once those jobs come here, then I think that we'll be okay. But some of these kids can make money just by YouTube. You tell them to put down the iPad, but I believe pick up the iPad. You can make money that way as well. <laughs> Why not? Yes. <laughs> Thirty seconds. You give them jobs. The city has a hundred million dollar budget. You can hire a hundred kids for seven dollars an hour. Six hundred dollars in their pocket every two weeks. That's how you can do it. We're going to enforce the law. We're going to make sure we hire the brightest and smartest law enforcement people. And that has to go with our, as we grow this economy, 
and we improve the salary of our first responders. We're going to make sure that they're up to date on current law enforcement that applies to today where we deal with children. And sometimes a kid doesn't need to be locked up for some of the stuff. Maybe he needs a police officer that knows what's really going on to explain to him. We need to work as a community. We need to love our children. We need to help them. We need to find out the reasons things are happening. But with prosperity and growth, good things are going to happen to our communities. And their parents, maybe their parents will have an opportunity to set up. Now they're busting their rear end at a minimum wage job. Maybe they'll have a better opportunity to stay at time home with their kids and take them to church and take them to opportunities at school. And I'm going to work real hard to do that. It's all coming back to jobs, growth, and prosperity. And I'm going to work hard to do that. <coughs> Now, I believe that I'm one of the only candidates that have gone through the, through the uh, CCA class, the Citizen Police Academy. That was my way of trying to find a way to touch bases with the chief of police, with the detectives, with the sergeants, the lieutenants, trying to find a way to combat this issue. The first thing that I would love to see is having more uh, uh, minorities on that police force. We don't have a lot. Uh, if you want to, they're scared. I've seen a lot of Hispanics, they're scared to do anything for the simple fact that uh, <coughs> If, if, they, if they speak a different language, they believe that they are, are a threat. Mayor, Candidate Sumner, what is your plan to, to put Valdosta on a pathway to mass transit? That's a good question. I don't think I can answer it in what a minute. We have 2.2 vehicles per household. It's not a Transportation or mode of transportation is not the issue. Everybody's got cars. However, <laughs> no, it's 2.2 cars per household, that's one of the highest. We do need to focus on transportation. Our current budget, we can't do it right now. But as we grow and we become more prosperous, that should be a goal for our community to have a transit authority that can provide transportation for those that don't have it. It's not going to, if someone tells you it's going to happen immediately, they're not telling you the truth. The federal government will give us money, but this uh, transit system is not going to operate profitably. The bottom line is going to come out of your, your budget. If you want to pay high taxes and all of that, but I think there's an opportunity. It's just not there in this time period. It may be four years, five years down the road, but it's certainly something as we grow as an MSA, we're going to have to compete with other communities, and that certainly should be one of our goals. <coughs> what is your plan to put us on a pathway to mass transit? Um, and this may come as a shock to a lot of you guys, but with uh, transit, I'm against it. I'm against the transportation until we can find a strategic way to do it to where it doesn't hurt you, to where it doesn't hurt your kids and the future generations to come here by the Austin, Georgia. Let me tell you, I work for the federal government. Now because of the Hatch Act, I can't tell you what I do, but let me tell you, on a day-to-day -day basis, I wake up and with every fiber in me, I'm here to see everybody become better. Whether it's disabled, elderly, and those guys on fixed incomes. We bring that transportation system here, and if you're from Valdosta, you know that it is a, a, a trending town. What's good right now may not be good five months down the road. Now, now you have your, your taxes being raised. Well, if you're on a fixed income, your bills are going up, but your money still stays the same. So I, I will not have it. I will not do it unless I see it become uh, uh, profitable or not profitable because it will never be profitable. But if it cannot be done in a strategic way, I'm not for transportation. Your question: What is your plan? Put thousand dollars on the pathway to tomorrow. Public transit as a bus system is a dog. It is a money losing dog that does not offer the proper return. I got a study called Uber and Lyft, and you can subsidize it with $250,000 on a $10 ride. You apply for your card, you utilize that card for <coughs> rides inside the city limits for whatever we set in that free or a $3 ride. It is a beautiful program, and if you want to look it up, but just Google search it. There are, there are communities all over the United States and Canada that have done away with their mass transit because of Uber and Lyft subsidies. All I got to do is set 250 grand on that table, let you come down and apply for that ride card, and 
and you're going anywhere you're needed, and it's picking you up at your front door. And guess what else it does? Jobs. With increased demand for those Uber and Lyft drivers, it's employing people to drive. It's giving, it's giving that side hustle to college students, to anybody that wants it. I'll fix it tomorrow and in my first year in office. What is your plan to put those on the pathway to mass transit? I'm not afraid to say I'm for public transportation. We need a bus system in Valdosta. We got one in Hinesville. We got one in Warner Robins, Augusta, Macon, Columbus, Atlanta, Savannah, Rome, Gainesville. You name any metro city in Georgia got one except us. It's so horrible why they got one and we don't. Probably if we don't want one. We sitting right here tonight in a place that can help pay for it. There are over 4,000 hotel motel rooms in Valdosta, Georgia. There's a house bill right now that would allow local communities to raise hotel motel tax one penny on the dollar. And you will raise over a million dollars to help pay for the system. The MPO, the Metropolitan Planning Organization, said you need $2 million. You just heard one of my opponents say we get money from the federal government. We're eligible for a million dollars in funding for a public transportation system. Folks, we've been a metro since 2003. We have lost a million dollars per year since 2003. That's $16 million. I ain't got that kind of money. Though. <laughs> if we need a system in Val Austin, and when you elect me mayor, we're going to get one. <laughs> I work for the federal government. The federal government will give you a million dollars. That is true. But that million dollars does not come all at one time. They may give you two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars but what's going to happen is you have to put, as a city, have to put that back out there on the front side. We don't have the money to do that. That's why we have to start making sure that we do things strategically. Again, if you put a, a one cent on to the Tourism Board Authority, that only brings you an authority or, or a, a tourism transportation. That's only going to take you from city, uh, city hall, maybe in that area downtown, maybe out the wide dimensions, but it still does not fix the problem here. Let's find a way and do it strategically. Can I respond to that, please? <laughs> now, we need that money. Kevin says the government won't give it to you all at one time. What about the airport? You subsidize the airport. Nobody complaining about that. I mean, y'all flew out of Valley Airport lately. I risk my case. <laughs> what about, what about rainwater conference center? We subsidize that. I mean, if that rainwater is late, I risk my case. I'm tired of people telling us what we can't do. I'm tired. Of, it's time for us to start talking about what we can do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 the transit system, if you can't get a job in Valdosta and got to go to Cook County to work, it ain't going to do you any good. So if we're going to put in a transit system, it's got to be between the city and the county, and it would probably even need to be done on a regional basis. It's something that's going to take a lot of thought, a lot of planning, it's going to be a lot of money. And so we, we've got to focus on the future. So that's just food for thought. Thank you. So Uber and Lyft happens without any buy -ins. There's $1.2 million sitting on the table, and that's a sucker's bet to get into public transit. Our regional development center says that it's a burden to any community. The here and now would be Uber and Lyft subsidized. The future, only a decade away, is self-driving cars to pick you up at your house. Program to pick you up at your house. If you don't have that kind of vision, you're going to get us into a big old burden known as public transit. <laughs> Madison, your question is Mayor Madison. Mayor Madison. Economists are projecting a recession in 2020. What is the first program you would cut, or would you address the recession? <laughs> first program I'm going to cut for the city of Austin. Wow. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> First of all, I don't, I don't sense a recession in 2020. There you go. I think the economy is strong. I think I suffered through a recession from 2008 as a business owner. I bought my business in 2007. I was asked for a second. 2008, it tanks. But I was in talk radio. So people turned to us for the problem. I, I don't know right offhand what I cut from the city of Valdosta. Um, I, I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk to somebody in this room. Uh, directly and say that 
but I would not go into the two auditorium business. That's all I wrote. Okay. So we'll start there. We got, we got, that's a half million dollar subsidy right there for Mathis Auditorium to keep it alive every, every day. We did look at, at everything, but it was, it, was the, it was the least cost effective of, of the programs. I think you all know that you have another opportunity out there. I would address it in a different manner. The city and the county are mandated to do something we call a service delivery agreement. We don't duplicate services. In other words, we live in Valley Austin. We shouldn't be paying for services that Valley County don't provide us. So there are a lot of things that we duplicate that need to be looked at. Why do we have two different engineering departments, for instance? The city has one, the county has one. We need to look at our services that we provide to see if we can uh, reduce or eliminate some of those services or combine or <coughs> consolidate some of those services. We have to look inside. Back when we had the recession in, in 2008, I was fire chief. We were, we were mandated to have a balanced budget. Mandated. So that means I had to trim back the fire department as homeowners, as, as parents. You do it every day. You want to buy things, but you can't because the money's just not there. You used to cutting back. Why can't see the hall do the same thing? Yeah, I'm the only candidate that's worked on the whole budget, not just one section of it. I served 10 years on council. The you know, first thing I'd do if we had to, I'd cut out uh, council's travel and expenses. That'd be the first place I'd start. <laughs> However, we all know that budgets can be tight. You know, you can adjust your budget at home. We do all the time. I'm not so sure we're going to be in a recession. I don't know. I don't, you know, who knows? But there are areas. I, I wouldn't want to go in and cut one program and take away from one group and give to another group. I think we'd all have to make a sacrifice on an equal basis like we have to do in our everyday lives. And we'd have to work together as a community. The, 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 the right of ways may not be mowed as often as they could be, you know? So we just have to work together. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Economists are predicting a recession in 2020. What is the first program you would cut? Or would you address the recession in a different way? Um, I would definitely not cut anything until I've done my due diligence by doing some research, working in a collaborative effort with the city council, with the city manager, the department heads. Uh, I heard one of my, my opponents say uh, that we need to start unifying some of our uh, the engineering department, the public works, things of that nature. Well, that goes into, that, that gives us a reason not to be up here, because that goes into consolidated government. Uh, we don't want to be a consolidated government. In order to do that, you first have to consolidate the school system. Um, that, so we don't we don't ever want to go into a consolidated government because we lose our representation. Who represents uh, the minority uh, when the votes are reversed on the on the other side? So I would be very careful in trying to consolidate things because then there's no reason for us to be up, be up here. We'll be up under the leadership of the of the commissioners and the chairman. Folks, we've already got duplication of services. We've already got consolidation of services. Inspections department, for instance, that's just one. There's only one inspection department. They have both city and county. So you gotta know your subject matter when you start talking. Uh -huh. <laughs> We're under the old service delivery agreement. We have yet to come to a new service delivery agreement. Our city government and our county government can't come to an agreement for two and a half years and $1.5 million worth of legal bills fighting each other. We have no service delivery agreement. We're existing under the old one, and we're the last county in the state of Georgia. Yeah, and, and I'm the only candidate that negotiated that first service delivery bill. Gladys Williams, Sonny Becker, and that's the last one that's been negotiated. And I guarantee you, when I get elected mayor, we will deliver that will be resolved. We will have a service delivery bill signed into law. Thank you. Mayor, Kevin, advice. Many mayors have struggled with reducing homelessness in Valdosta. What is your plan for the homeless? 
As I alluded to earlier, we have a serious homeless problem about Austin. We have over 100 people in our town that are homeless. Uh, there are programs that are, that are being ran right now, and if I'm not mistaken, it's over in, over in Moultrie, where they build homes for homeless people. Uh, I met a lady the other day at the uh, Thursday Food uh, Festival downtown. She said her and her two kids were sleeping in a car. And, and, that, and, that, and that hit me. That, but she still had her kids in school. People have real issues that need to be addressed. But we need to step up as a city and do something. There are grants out there, there are programs out there that we can provide to get these people into a, 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 a decent home they can live in. We need to address that issue. Mayor and candidate Sumner, your question. Many mayors have struggled with well reducing homelessness in Valdosta. What is your plan for the home? Well, we're an entitlement city. That's what we're supposed to do. We're an MSA. People come here for entitlement. We're a metropolitan statistical area. And we've got the plan. It, that, that is not going to go away, that issue. As we grow and as we become more prosperous, more people are going to come to our community. They're going to come for affordable housing, affordable benefits, and there are going to be some people that are going to come here with nothing. And we need to have programs in place to accommodate those people. That's part of growing up. That's part of our maturity to take our leadership role in South Georgia as the shining star on the hill. Mayor, that question, many mayors have struggled with reducing homelessness in Valdosta. What is your plan for the homeless? Uh, I'm one of the only candidates uh, that I know of uh, that have gone out and did the homeless count. Um, but there's a big epidemic of, of homelessness here in our city. The problem is, is that we got to be able to advocate more for the homeless, but uh, those are more of the state level issues. Uh, because what's homeless is not, what's homeless to you may not be homeless to the state. Meaning that if you are in your car, you're not homeless. That means that we lose out on funds. So when you're, when you're sleeping on the couch of a friend or family member, that's not considered homeless but you are. Uh, just because you sit in the back seat of a car, you're homeless. But in our, in our, for the state, they're saying that you're not. So we need to make sure that we advocate to the state that when, when we say homeless, homeless, everybody, is, uh, or the people that are homeless are homeless, and let's get those funds so that we can get these things uh, taken care of. That's what I want to do. That counts 350 plus. I got the plan. I was on the board for LAMP for the last three years. I've worked with them for 30. I've got a whole bunch of different directors. When I was on the board for LAMP. We had three different directors in three years. We got a homeless issue in this problem, in this town, and I got a solution. A tiny house community. It's 90 days inside LAMP. That's their program. Then they try and rehouse you. It's 90 days at the Salvation Army's shelter. We got the Haven as a shelter for battered women that needs to transition people out and needs those beds. A tiny house community, 40 houses sitting inside. You make your own plan. You walk in and say, I need a year. You say, I need two years. And then they counsel you every month as to how long you stay there. We can transition them out in 90 days and right into that tiny house community. They pay one fee and that, that that land bank takes care of the entire place, the grounds and all. It's a, it's a place of proud to call home and proud to live in. I got to cut. Mayor the city's zoning code has not been updated in quite some time. What changes would you like to see in the city's zoning and where? That, that's a document about that mm -hmm. thing. And when I was in city government, I fought it all the time because I thought that in many instances, government overstepped on our personal freedoms of living in the city. And things have become so complex. We want to we want to have a plan like Atlanta, Richmond, Tallahassee, and we're Valdosta. And you put can't put a square peg in a round hole. So when I'm elected mayor, we're going to have a total review and we're going to make <clears throat> those ordinances applicable to other communities that are like us, not big, huge cities. 
mayor can request the meeting to repeat questions. The city zoning code has not been updated in quite some time. What changes would you like to see in the city zoning and when? I would love to start saying that being proactive opposed to being a reactive. We need to get into, uh, this shouldn't even be a, a, a question because the previous mayor should have been into those policies, update those policies with the city council and the elected officials. Uh, that is something that we should have worked on time and time again. Um, that is something that I would love to do if elected as your mayor. I would love to go into that policy uh, looking to see what needs to be updated. Uh, because maybe what worked for us in 2008, maybe not, it, it won't work for us now. So I would love for us on a, in a collaborative way uh, start to go into those policies and do some updating. <coughs> Just get, get out of their way. I'm crying out loud. Just get out of their way. It makes zero sense that from blueprint to finished product, it takes you a year to get in. It makes no sense. Not for the city of Valdosta, it doesn't make any sense. You, from blueprint to to uh, walk into that new building or that new business, if it takes three months, you're on our tax rolls. You're on our tax rolls eight months faster. It makes no sense to delay them to anybody involved because that guy that he started, the day he started building, he, he's paying back that loan. They didn't say, you don't have to pay it back till you get in. They said, here's the money, start paying it back. From the, so any delay for that guy cost him money, any delay for him getting up and running cost the city money. It makes no sense. Get out of their way. What, what, what the question about zoning, not building permit? Actually, it was about zoning. Okay, I want to clarify. Oh. <laughs> Can I advise your question? No, sir. <laughs> How many people like to eat chips? Uh, we almost need to get chips because of over regulation. Too much red tape. We have a document David was alluding to, it's called the LDR, Land Development Regulation. It is about that thick, about 1,500 pages. The whole document needs to be thrown away. I'll I tell you why. There's an article in Forbes magazine that ranked 200 small to medium cities as being business friendly. Athens ranked six in the nation. We ranked 125. Wow. may be the most important election in our lifetimes. Our city has struggled over the past years. Mayor John Gale has done an excellent job of leading the city. He came there in a difficult time. John brought a common effect to our city. He cooled down many hot items and he helped bring people together. For that, I'm grateful. It's an honor to have been raised in Valdosta. No matter where I'm going to go, I'm proud to call Valdosta home. Our legendary Valdosta High coach, Nick Hyder, taught us about winning and laid out the foundations of leadership, teamwork, two principles that I've always applied to my life. When elected mayor, I'll work hard as a team leader and actively lead this city, working with the city council and all citizens to make Valdosta the very best it can be. For job growth, prosperity, low property taxes, and improved quality of life, vote for me, David Sumner, for mayor. When elected, all neighborhoods and all voices will be heard. Working together, we can build a better Valdosta. Thank you. Guys, we've we, we heard a lot today. But let me tell you that I'm dedicated, I'm passionate about this city. After serving in the military and medically retired out of the military, I came back here for one reason, and that is for the betterment and the upliftment of Valdosta, Georgia. We have so much untapped potential here. I love this city. But when do we start to win? We've taken so many losses. When do we start to win? So let's win economically. Let's win with the revitalization of our neighborhoods. Let's win with, with crime. Let's win with uh, a better mentality. Let's win for the future generations. Let's win. And on November 5th, 
Let's elect Kevin J. Bussey, uh, your mayor, can, uh, your mayor of Badosta, Georgia, your 46th mayor of Badosta, Georgia, uh, so that we can truly make the city a city without limits by adopting my model. One team, one fight, one Badosta. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I want to be your mayor. Again, I've developed the, these relationships over the last 30 years. I want to put them to work for you. I'd be honored to put them to work for you. I'd be honored to work with that county commission, with that city council, with our state leaders as well. And I'll give you one I'm going to go to early and often. If I can't work with Vivian, I can't work with that council on a certain project. If I take a lump and a loss on occasion when I'm trying to gain consensus, I can walk up to that state house. That current governor sat in my studio five times a year for eight years. We developed quite a friendship. I could walk into that man's office. If I got a worthy project, we can get it done. I'd like to do that for you, if elected mayor. Thank you. I'm running simply because I think I have the KSAs needed in the job the knowledge, the skills, and the ability. I'm asking you to put your trust in me. Based on what I've done my last 22 years here in Valos, 18 as your fire chief. Most of you have seen the transformation we made at that fire department. I want to bring that same zest, the same commitment, that same know how to get things done attitude to City Hall as your mayor. Thank you.